Welcome to my channel, I'm Robin Clevett and in this video I want to talk to you about the importance of ventilating behind cladding. In this case we're using timber cladding and a timber frame building so it's a very straightforward job and many timber frame buildings might have a brick skin which is, which is a normal cavity and then a brick skin or it will have cladding of some description. It might be render board and rendered but in this case we're using timber cladding. So the first thing we need to do is provide an airspace. So if you're running horizontally then you need a counter batten vertically fixed to the studs and that would need to be a minimum of 25 millimeters and in some cases some timber uh, suppliers that supply cladding say that it needs to be as much as 50 or 38 millimeters okay so that's quite important you get that right we're doing a horizontal cladding which means we need to batten twice we'll do our first counter batten this way and then we'll run a next batten across this way so we're effectively getting a 50 millimeter uh, space okay allowing for 25 mil clear airflow all the way through behind the cladding but it's no good having a space if you're not bringing any air in at the bottom and letting it get out at the top now during the course of this video i'll mention why some of these things are really important to why we shouldn't let moisture build up behind timber cladding but in the meantime we're going to be nailing on a series of battens from bottom to top we're going to keep them back from our overhang by about 10 millimeters, which, is allow, which will allow the air out. But it's no good having a big gap at the bottom to allow all kinds of insects and small rodents up the back. You need to have a strip of some description. So I've got a plastic strip here, which you can see has got all the ventilation holes in it. And that will be fixed at the very bottom. Then we'll have a counter batten button down into it here. And then we'll have our second batten over the top here, allowing the gaps in between to be ventilated. We'll put that on the bottom and we'll put it on the top and then we'll take our timber cladding straight the way down and hang it past. So that, that's completely hidden, you don't see it from anywhere, okay? So all we do with this is we'll attach this on the very bottom to start with nice and level. That will get fixed on here. Then we'll run our battens in, our first, lower, our first lot of battens here and then we'll do our second batten. So that's what we're gonna get on with. I wanna show you how I go about cutting all of these battens, these uprights, exactly the same. So pop inside. I've put a couple of my trestles. I've screwed a bit of ply in across the top. And at the back, I've also screwed to a batten on the wall and to the bench. So this is all really solid, okay? So this isn't moving anywhere. Then I marked up one of my battens. So they're about 3.2 meters long. And I put a mark on it and I simply aligned the saw to actually be the exact same length, okay? So what we've got now is the saw, it's only taken a couple of minutes, but the saw is nice and solid. It's held from the wall. So all I have to do is quickly put the batten on, sit it on the batten on the wall, put it against the saw, cut it off. And repeat that process 28 times and it's done. So. I know then that all of these are exactly the same size. I haven't had to measure them. So when I put my trim on the top, trim on the bottom, it's nice and parallel all the way through. So that's the job we're gonna get on. We're gonna cut all those, then we'll start fixing them on and putting the strips around. And that's pretty straightforward. It's one of those jobs I really enjoy because it's kind of like, you don't have to do a lot of thinking. You can just get on with it, cover a lot of ground and get ready for the exciting bit which is the cladding. So the bottom of my timber frame is all nice and true and level. So we're gonna go with that and we basically just gotta pop this straight on the bottom. And I'm gonna screw this on as well because it's just a little bit easier to manage. You could tack it on with nails. And we don't need that many fixings because when the battens come down, they will hold it back as well. But this is important to get this nice and true, nice and level because it helps setting out everything else. So we'll just pop a couple of screws in and that'll be, Adequate. I'm screwing away from the stud. If I screw there and I put a nail anywhere near it, it might hold it off. But as I know, the battens will clamp that nice and flat then. So I don't need too many screws, enough to hold it. It's nice and strong. It's easy to cut this stuff. You can use a hacksaw, a fine tooth handsaw. I like to use a small angle grinder with a the really thin metal discs and I'll just show you that. So it's just got one of these really thin discs. They're absolutely perfect for plastic. So I've just cut this, I've just cut this out on this one here. So this next one can butt in because ideally we don't want any 
gaps at all. We don't want anything to get in. You don't want to leave that because you might get bees and wasps coming in. And then when I come up to an opening over here, for example, I'll just nip it straight off. Bar that up against there. And we'll nip that off there. But it's such a nice clean cut. Use that for all sorts of things, that little grinder. Metal, plastic, one of my favorite tools. And this material that you see here isn't, isn't overly expensive either. It's much easier to use than fly mesh on a roll. And that's a lovely detail. I really like that detail. The fact it's white doesn't matter. Um, if it's a, a, a higher story, for example, and you could see up, let's say you've got brick to start with and then cladding, you may want to find a black one, maybe an aluminium one. You can get these in aluminium as well if you're going to see it. Um, and then the next job, as I say, we'll be doing the battening. So we'll be bringing the battens down into it here. Then the next level will be in front there. So we'll get all that round and then start doing some battening. So why do we want to ventilate cladding? Okay, so the first and the main one is to prevent moisture buildup because timber is a hydroscopic material, meaning it absorbs and releases moisture from the surrounding air, okay? So when the moisture builds up in timber cladding, it leads to a number of problems, swelling, rotting, decay. So the ventilation helps prevent that moisture buildup. It allows the air to circulate behind the cladding and dry out any moisture that gets in. So that will also reduce the rip. That will also reduce the risk of fungal growth, okay? So fungi needs moisture to grow, of course. And ventilating that timber cladding helps reduce the risk of fungal growth. Um, and that's really important in humid climates as well. So we're not generally that humid in the UK like some of these hotter areas, but it's um, also the same if you get a lot of rain because the rain creates humidity as well. And believe it or not, ventilating a space behind cladding gives you better thermal performance. So it sounds counterintuitive that you've got cold air blowing behind the cladding, but actually a ventilated timber uh, cavity behind timber cladding will improve the thermal performance because that air gap acts as an insulator, believe it or not, helping to keep the building warm in the winter and cool in the summer. And obviously, one of the main reasons to extend the lifespan of the cladding, okay? So preventing the moisture and the fungi growth, ventilation will help extend the lifespan of timber cladding, and it means that it will require a lot less maintenance. So once we've put our initial counter batten on, then it's time to cross batten. So now you can see the detail, how the batten comes down, the first batten comes down and secures the trim, the air trim, okay? And then what we start off with is a rail coming through the bottom. So that will sit on there. So we'll fix that back. Now what I'm using to fix these backs, you could actually use a nail. You could put a 90 mil nail through there as long as it's galvanized, okay? But I'm using a spack screw. It's an actual batten screw. It's about 87 millimeters long. It's an odd size, but it will go all the way through, back through the OSB and into the stud as well. Crucially, what it won't do is split the batten. It's an absolutely beautiful bit of kit. If you look at that head, it's like a, it's got a washer on the top. It's dead flat. So all that's going to do is pull in flat. And that is such a nice fixing. It's really strong. Um, they're also designed for this purpose. They're a batten screw. So it's not like you're going to use something like a timber screw, which is brittle, which is what you don't want. So. Once I've put through the bottom rail here, I'll start gauging up. So I'm going to put seven battens up here and I've got a simple gauge rod there. That is the actual courses. So all I've got to do is mark either end on the batten there and the next one. And that would be the process that I go through all the way through. I can also mark this end here and here. So I'm not measuring anything. I'm not necessarily having to level anything either. What you can do is put your level on the very bottom piece, make sure it's dead flat. 
if you're going to use a rod like this because obviously it's going to follow so we'll drop the level on there and i've got to screw this end this end's unfixed at the minute so i'm just going to pop that on there there we go and you can see on the window reveal i've got a batten on edge and the faces of my battens are going to come into it and what that gives me then is some really nice solid grounds for my last strip of cladding to come down and my reveal to come out. So I've got a nice solid corner there. Um, so that's the basis of this. I'll just put another, pop another fixing on the end here. This is the corner obviously. But they will not split. And then it's just a matter of putting my next courses on. Let's put this one on as it's eye level. On there, and there we have it. Pop the fixing in that. That's a nice system. And what you've got there is a nice, you've got a nice framework, which is going to be beautiful to clad. The corner detail is slightly different to other ones you may have seen on my channel. So what we have here is we have another batten rising up there and then we keep these courses in there. Then I've got the flexibility of having a solid corner post, running my cladding over, or indeed putting, because I've got a, um, a small square corner section for this cladding, which is a finished prepared section. Um, so I will probably then work out the exact amount of packing and rips there to get it exactly in the corner as well. So for now, I'm not gonna commit. I'm gonna keep back to here. I'm not gonna lap these battens across and end up struggling to get the thing in. I'll just pop this one in as well. And the centers are round about 500. And that's purely down to, six is about the limit, 600. But what I want is my fixings to be all spaced equally if possible. Only I'll know about that. No one else will take any notice of it. But that detail repeats its way up to the top. We've got the trim at the top, the trim at the bottom, and the air can all blow out. So that is the basis of how you would actually ventilate behind timber cladding. And it can be vertical on a double counter button, or it can be horizontal on a single. And you can see over the top here in this gap, you can see all that lovely space for the air to come through which is absolutely brilliant. So even though your bottom batten for fixing all the ends of your cladding is here, you've got plenty of ventilation coming all the way through and up. So I hope that has taken some of the myths out of ventilating timber cladding, but I would say it's super important to do it. And um, if you have any questions, pop them in the comments.